It is a pleasure to be back in the studio today with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak, and this is the Retirement Education Hour. We talk about retirement planning here on the show, and we have a great program lined up for you today. We are prepared to tell you what your greatest risk in retirement is. That's right. So you want to stay tuned for that. Also, we'll be explaining how you can get registered for one of Kirk and Paul's upcoming courses. Now, these are a deep dive into what you need to know to plan a successful modern retirement. And you can do that. You can register by going to the website. Just go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-89. 81. Kirk Paul, great to be back. The biggest risk in retirement. I'm on the edge of my seat. What is it, guys? Well, other than ourselves, because we are the greatest risk to our retirement, it's sequence of return risk. It's something we, I think we talk about just about every show that we do, Paul. We, we mention, discuss the risks associated with it. I don't think that people fully appreciate this is the number one risk. And, and it's because our industry has done a very, very, the financial service industry has done a terrific job of sort of hiding this risk because they don't have an answer to address this risk. So therefore, there is no risk. But we know academia has proven this. Yale, Harvard, Wharton, they've all done studies on sequence of return risk. In fact, I would encourage all of you listening to our show Just go home, Google sequence of return risk, and you're going to find a a number of articles and studies that have been done to help explain this. But we're going to do our best today to try to explain exactly what sequence of return risk is, why it is so dangerous for you, why you have very little control over it unless you really do advanced specific planning. In planning, when I mean planning, Paul, it's not planning on specifically what you invest in because everyone thinks it's just investments, but it's really about your income planning, where and when you're taking income from which accounts, because we can't control what market performance is going to be from any given year. We don't have a crystal ball, but we can control where we're taking our monies from when the market is volatile. So to prevent this massive mistake. That people won't even realize they made a mistake until it's too late. Right. The the reason why I think this is so important, I'm glad we're doing this topic, is I just think most people out there who are listening are assuming their greatest risk to retirement is basically low perform, you know, low rates of return over their, you know, in their in their stocks. I think most people just assume in their accounts that they're investing their money. The greatest risk is they don't they they underperform. Their investments don't do great over a long period of time. And, and it turns out that, and, and we're, I, I'm hoping we have time, we can show some examples. Really, that is not by far the, the biggest risk. It really is not the risk. You no. can actually, at the, you know, and, and you say this all the time, at the end of the day, at some point, it's sort of too late, right? At some point, you're not going to move the needle that much, depending on how high you perform or how low you perform. It really is the sequence in which you take your monies out. We, we need to define that maybe at the break. Yeah, you know, so... We say this a lot in the shows, and not, I'm not, I often wonder if people don't believe us, right? Here comes, you know, financial instructors for a nonprofit, but we do have our own private practice where we manage a lot of money and we're responsible for a lot of money. And it's not every day you hear someone in the financial service industry telling you performance isn't go- performance of your investments aren't what is going to drive your success in retirement. I think that people struggle to understand how we would say that. It is not how your investments perform throughout retirement that's going to determine whether you outlive your money or not. It's not. And we're going to prove that today. And I'm going to help you. We're going to give you a tool that you can prove it for yourself when when we give you uh, access to a sequence of return calculator we've created for you. So one of the big things we cover in our classes, and, and we've been teaching these classes for almost 10 years at all the major universities, is teaching people where the risks and traps are and how to design a plan to avoid those. And it's often centered around this sequence of return risk topic. And it's why it takes seven to eight hours of a classroom education for you fully to understand the risk and how to navigate that risk. So if you'd like to attend one of our courses, it's $29 donation to charity. That's all you got to do. And you can attend our eight hour course. We're teaching them at all the major universities and streaming them live via Zoom right now so you can attend in the safety of your own home. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com. So, Kirk, we've been spending 
four minutes, five minutes talking about something, we probably should define it. So define, I mean, it's, it's a big term, right? But what is, when we say sequence of return, how would you define this? So can, can we save that for the first segment? I want to save that for the se- first segment, and I'll explain can to I you. Can I say no? <laughs> no, of course. So what I'd rather do is talk about where we're going to take them today. Okay. And so what we're going to take them through is defining sequence of return risk. We're going to take them through some examples of this where what happens early in their investments and where they're taking their income from early is going to determine whether they outlive their money or not. We know, research shows that if we have a market event in the first five years of retirement, your chances of outliving your money, a bad market event in the first five years of retirement, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. I, I don't you all, aren't you all listening, wondering why you haven't heard this before? Like there is a first five years of your retirement is going to drive. And here's a crazy thing, Paul, in the first five years of retirement, all studies show that 66% of our listeners are going to spend more money in the first uh, five years of retirement than they did the last five years of their working, which is again, not something they're hearing. So they believe otherwise. So they set themselves up for a trap early in retirement that no one is warning them or preparing them for because it's because they don't, there's not a simple solution to this. The solution requires a lot of time, education, energy, and planning in a software system that they can plug a few numbers in is not going to produce that solution for them. It, a one size fits all cookie cutter isn't going to work. Now I'll say this, Paul, for those people who are the average retiree, who's going to retire with about $200,000 in retirement, maybe a little less of an issue because it's just a different approach. But the majority of people who have resources in retirement, you have to have a customized solution here. So you got to know where the traps are before you start this process. So it's why we started our classes 10 years ago. And we are now teaching at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, the Novi campus and Troy campus, Oakland University. We're also teaching in our Livonia Learning Center that we've opened and we're streaming it via Zoom during COVID so people can stay in the safety of their own home. It's a $29 donation to charity, gets you a seven hour class. 200 page textbook. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800 240 8981. Back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Great to be back with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. They are both financial instructors and I'm learning a lot today about what they say is your greatest risk in retirement, and that is sequence of returns risk. I want to make sure you know you can follow Kirk and Paul on Facebook. Simply search for Retirement Education Foundation, and you can learn a lot more, a lot of great resources as they keep us up to date on the latest for retirement planning. So sequence of returns risk, this is a sometimes complicated, right? Admittedly complicated concept, but boy, is it important to understand how it could affect our retirement finances. So break this down for us. How do we easily define this? Paul, can you give a a, a general definition of sequence of return risk, and then I'll give some examples? Sure. So it sounds complicated. It's not so complicated. It's really the risk of receiving negative returns early on when you start taking money out of accounts. So it's the risk of your account's going down in value at the same time you're withdrawing money out of those accounts. And if it so happens that the sequence of those returns are negative early on in those accounts and you're pulling money out, the risk of outliving your money goes up significantly. I think, you know, use the number 75%. Yeah, good. So that is exactly what it is. And so let's quantify that a little bit. So today we're going to go through a number of different examples throughout the different segments of different sequences of which markets generate returns for you. And when you start taking withdrawals, how it impacts it, right? So we're going to show examples where you can have a 10% average rate of return over a 20-year period, only withdraw 5% a year, and you run out of money in 17 years. So some of you are going to say, how is that possible? I have an average 10% return, and I'm only going to take out 5% every year. I sh- that money should last forever. It doesn't because, see, this is what's unique. The whole strategy 
everything about your investing and managing money is totally different once you retire. And it's where most of the industry, the financial service industry falls short because they try to be one thing for everyone. And they're only focusing on growing your money, not on the distribution of your money. And everything changes once you retire because when you're younger and you're working and we have market volatility, it goes up and down. The sequence of the returns doesn't make a difference as long as you have time, you have an average return. And you're not withdrawing money out. And you're not withdrawing money out. The result will be the same, Paul, right? It doesn't matter. We show that multiple times in the class where you can get the same average return over a 20-year period in different orders, like you know, losing early, losing late, losing in the middle, all kinds of different scenarios, and you still end up with the same amount of money. But when you retire and you are pulling out your 5% a year to live on, you're pulling your withdrawals out to live on, and the market goes down, you got to understand when the market's going down and you pull money out, now you have fewer shares. It's Let me make it simple. You lose 50%, you need 100% to break even, right? We know if we have a, a COVID event where the market goes down 34%, you, all of you witnessed it. We, you needed to earn almost 54% to break back even, right? So you actually had a positive return on the year, but your money didn't break even until you got up to 54%. So imagine you retire and the portfolio goes down 10% in a year, and then you take out 5%. You have 5% fewer shares to recover from, right? So it makes it that much difficult, more difficult to come back. And and there isn't a year you're not going to take money out because once you turn 72, you have to start taking your required distributions, meaning you have to start taking withdrawals, Paul. They don't have a choice. You're going to need money to live on and the IRS says you have to take it. Yeah. Can I, can I, I think it's uh, your example. It's hard to, it's hard to explain it without, you know, the visual cues. Yeah. But, but I think in some really what we're saying is volatility is not our friend once you retire, right? We don't mind volatility when you're working. In fact, sometimes it's opportunities to buy, but volatility is not our friend once you start taking money out of your, those accounts. And, and we'll talk a little bit about the future and volatility and, and things like that. But the reality is you don't know if the market's going to be volatile when you retire, uh, but the risk of outliving your money is significant if it is, and you're taking money th- out of those accounts. So you, you nailed the problem, right? Volatility is your enemy, but we know no one's uh, – some people turn to active management. I can reduce the downside risk with active management. Well, if you guys are really worried about performance, active managers never win over any period of time, never. So they'll argue, and, and I get it, active management can help reduce volatility. It's easier. It's not that complicated. There's no voodoo of someone trying to guess on if the market's going up or down. If you're more strategic about what accounts you're taking your money from and when you should take that money from different accounts, you can manage the volatility of your outliving your money by just not worrying about the volatility of the market, right? Who cares what the market does, but where I take that money from can manage that risk because no one has a crystal ball. I don't care how good of a money manager anyone pretends to be. They're, they're not that good. <laughs> they can't predict a COVID event. They can't always, they can't predict recessions and headline uh, risks and Brexit. And, you know, uh, um, and, and the perfect example of this is after the pandemic, how many people argued, is this a V shaped? Is this a W shaped? Is this a U shaped recession? And, and most people said this can't be a V shape. And what, what did it turn out to be? Oh, it was definitely. definitely oh, wait. V-shaped. It might be a K-shape. I know some people say a K-shape, but right. that's a different discussion. The, right. The, the bottom line is, is that is that. That's the economy versus the market, right? Right. Right. So the market is, was a V-shape, right? Right. When I, right that, the market was a V. Right. So no one. No one predicted that. No one predicted that. No one that. predicted that. And I think that's the problem. The problem is, is that I think what you're saying is that even the best active managers no one has a crystal ball. No one knows the future volatility. And, th- and th- here's the thing. Things go up and they go down and they go up and they don't go down. You're, the market doesn't just go down or just go up. It's a seesaw. It goes up and down. And every time you're withdrawing money out of those accounts that happen to go down, that's when you run into problems. And, and so we're going to talk a little bit, I think, a, a little later on. What are some of the solutions? Like, what are some of the things that people can do to avoid this? Obviously, the bottom line is we want to take money out of accounts that don't have volatility. And we're going to talk about how to do that. So uh, let's talk about the class, right? So, you know, we te- we've been teaching a class for a long time. It's a seven-hour class, normally held at local universities, University of Michigan, 
Michigan State University, the Novi campus, Oakland University, Michigan State University. A variety, we also teach a class. We've t- taught a class and been teaching a class here at our learning center here in Livonia. Since the pandemic, we've been streaming this live so people can, can attend the class and, and feel safe. The donation is $29. It costs $29 to attend. Again, seven-hour course. We would encourage you, if you really want to avoid this risk, which is the greatest risk you're going to be exposed to, learn about how to manage this. Go to the class. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can register when you go online, or you can call 1-800-240-8981. The number is 1-800-240-8981. And we will be back. There's more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. It's a pleasure to be in the studio with Kirk and Paul today. Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, they are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Find them on Facebook. Simply search Retirement Education Foundation. We're talking about the biggest risk to your retirement right now. And Kirk and Paul, baby boomers, especially those who are in or nearing retirement, how vulnerable are they to all the ups and downs we see on Wall Street? Well, I think this particular time for baby boomers, this topic of sequence of return risk, it's never more important to talk about in history, I think, because we've got a market that's at an all-time high. It's the highest we've ever had in history without question. And we also have 10,000 baby boomers retiring a day. I mean, literally, right? So it's, we have a perfect storm of market all-time highs, tons of people retiring be out of choice, out of necessity, because they're forced, because of health, because of COVID, because of economic conditions. Perfect storm of a lot of people retiring and a market all-time high which markets don't just go up forever. I know that we've had a very extended bull run and people have gotten very confident, I would argue way overconfident. People tend to get over their skis. We saw this, right? I mean, we saw 35% of people over the age of 65 panic in March. 35% of people 65 years old panicked in March and sold everything when COVID hit. That tells us that's a clear indication Behavioral Finance 101, it's a clear indication people were overconfident, had too much risk in their portfolio, thought it was just going to go up, and they got caught. And, and I think that's, one, that's the second biggest mistake in re- retirement is not <laughs> understanding your relationship with money is going to change. You'll never be more vulnerable. No matter how logical and mathematical you are, it will become very emotional, whether you want to or not. Right? Yeah, no, no, for sure, for sure. You know, so I, I think when you say, just to clarify, that right now baby boomers are really at a, at a pretty significant risk, and you give a good example of sort of the emotions out there and the, the anxiety, I think, that out, that's out there. I, I think it's fair to say, and, and I think we, we've seen in the last couple of weeks, right, with with what happened with GameStop, GameStop and, yeah. and all the shorting, which that that this is just the beginning. I, I mean, I think we've seen a trend where market volatility has slowly been going up and up and up, and we can give some numbers to, to show that, right? I think when you compare 2019 to 2020 and now so far 2021, the indexes that are used to, 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 to measure risk of volatility are, is going up. And I think, again, we saw that with GameStop, where, and I think that's only going to continue. And I think there's a lot of reasons why it's going to continue. And I think the more it continues, the more we're going to see these bubbles pop, and the more we're going to see a lot more volatility, and that's the worst that could, there's no worse time for someone who's retiring than to deal with that. Paul, you're 100% right. I mean, I know that people want to debate valuations right now, whether some of the particular sectors that have done really, really well, like extraordinarily well, like breaking all time records of how well it's doing. They've gotten what we call really expensive. The, the stock price is it's hard to justify the valuations that they're putting on some of these stocks. And so there's many people who speculate there's a bubble. And, but, but here's the deal. I mean, we've heard this before, right? I mean, Peter Lynch, one of the greatest investors, they say, of all time, called the top in 1995. He missed it. He missed it by five years, Paul, right? Five years. Five years was 100% in returns by trying to call the top. Don't play the timing game. Don't think you can call this top. We're not telling you it's going to pop now. It could pop in two years, three years, five years. We don't know. What we do know is if you retire and in that first five to 10 years of retirement, 
if we have volatility and we have corrections or, or recession or a bubble pops, you are very, very vulnerable if you don't have an effective plan to be able to pivot and, and know what accounts to take your income from. I, I, I think – Don't change your investment philosophies, by the way. Sorry. No, I mean I, I think I want to be careful because we use the term bubble and the assumption is it has to be huge, right? I guess what I'm saying what, – what I'm suggesting is we just had a bubble pop. Right, we did. We did, that little GameStop was a bubble popping, and, and it's going to. I mean, because really, we're talking about again, market volatility is your enemy, right? And at the end of the day, what's happened and what we saw just a couple weeks ago was massive market volatility. And there's, I don't want to get into the, we don't want to get into the weeds of why that happened, right? But there are a lot of people who believe this is the new world, and we're going to continue seeing that. Oh, it's and, no and, doubt. And, and I think I think there is a lot of reason for that. And so the problem is. All these little bubbles that pop, all that does in terms of your portfolio is you're going to see a lot of up and a lot of down. And if you happen to be retired at the time, that's the worst thing that can happen for you if that's the account you're living off of for income. Well, thank you. I'm glad you, you finished the sentence the way I was hoping you would, because I think sometimes people will hear us and say, well, then I, I got to not take risk. Some no. of you are going to say, I need to go to bonds. And we're definitely not telling you to go to bonds, right? In the lowest interest rate environment, and when interest rates rise, you're going to lose money in bonds. Over the next 10 years, I would argue your bond funds are going to lose money, okay? In real return, it will lose money. That isn't the solution. That's not what we're saying, okay? We're not saying to come out of the markets. We're not telling you that you shouldn't be invested. I want to make sure people understand because they people have this bias and people tend to have anxiety and fear and feel vulnerable already in retirement. So they hear this and that's their cue. That's what they just the justification or rationalization they need to. I'm going to cash or I'm going to go to all. That's not what we're telling you. We're responsible for over a billion dollars in our private practice. And we've got a lot of money exposed to a lot of risk that that's okay. You're, you still need to invest for the long term. The key isn't what you see. What's going to drive your performance isn't the investments. I know this is hard for you guys to understand. What's going to drive your performance is when you're taking distributions to live on and from which accounts and certainly minimizing taxes is a big variable in that too, which is a topic for another day and another show. But navigating the sequence of return risk and pulling money out of the right accounts at the right times. And I guarantee you, none of you have advisors talking to you about this. This isn't what they're not going to spend this time. They come up with simple solutions. So you self-regulate and try to do the, oh, protect your principal. That's all they're doing is they're trying to have you self-regulate the sequence of return risk. And you can't. Well, you might be able to, but you're going to way underlive the the retirement you otherwise could have had if you just had a plan and understand how to mitigate these risks. That's all you got to do is education. You you can't depend on the financial service industry to build your retirement plan. They don't do it. They just won't. It takes too much time. It's a lot of liability. There's a lot of tax you got to attend a seven-hour course, and we're teaching them and have been teaching them in all the major universities and streaming them live since COVID. And all you got to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can attend this, this seven-hour course. If you'd like to register for one of the classes, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we're back in just a moment. Here with Kirk and Paul, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak. Great to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Now, Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, they are also on Facebook. You can learn a lot there. Terrific resources provided. Just search Retirement Education Foundation. We're talking about a huge risk to retirement, modern retirement right now, and that is sequence of returns risk. So let's talk about this. Let's maybe give some examples of how this is actually affecting people in the real world. Okay. So I'm going to give some examples and this is difficult to do without us and why it's so much well, easier. We're not a class, whiteboard. Yeah. Right. I mean, we, we illustrate and, and spend, we spent an over an hour just talking about this topic and we are concerned. Paul and I, between segments here, we're talking about being worried about the message, what you guys are hearing us say. And we want to make sure we're not scaring people out of the market because by no means that's what we're saying. We're simply saying that you can't be taking your 
income that you're living on out of accounts that have volatility in the markets. That's it. That's all we're saying. And to effectively do that, you have to have a plan. And so, but we are trying to very succinctly, as best as we can, convince you this is your risk. This is your number one thing that all of you should be concerned with. And so, we are so convinced and committed to educating people on this at the charity, at the nonprofit, the foundation, that we've created, and it's going to go live here right now, a calculator. It's an interactive calculator so that you can see different market returns while taking money out and how long your money will last. And then we've created a white paper specifically on this topic that we're going to encourage all of you to go and get on the Retirement Education uh, Foundation. So it's retirementplanningedu.com is where you're going to find that. So I'm going to give you an example. We have, we're going to take eight years of returns. We went out eight years, and we're going to have someone starting with $1 million of investable assets. So you're going to retire with a $1 million, and we're going to take out 5% a year to live on. We need to live on 5% out of our $1 million. And in the first year, we have a, and we lost. The first year, we lost 18%. The second year, we lost 6%. You mean the account, the account went down? Yeah, the okay, account went down 18%. The second year, the account went down 6%. The third year, the account goes up 10%. The fourth year, the account goes up 20%. Fifth year, the account goes up 30%. The sixth year, the account goes down 9%. The seventh year, we have a 3% return. And in the eighth year, we have an 18% return. If you add all of those together, you would have an average rate of return of 6%, okay? That is the sequence. A 6% rate of return is what we've gotten. We're going to take out 5% a year to live on with inflation built into that. And in that example, your million dollars would run out of money. You would be broke, gone, everything gone in 21 years. So, Paul. That's it. That's it. I mean, it's startling. Yeah. So what did I – those were very realistic returns. I didn't cherry pick anything. I'm sorry. The first year was what? First year, we lost 18%. the second year? We lost 6%. And then the third year? We made 10, 20, and 30% consecutive years after that. We had an average return over eight years of 6%. Average return was 6%. We took out 5% to live on, Paul. So all we did was take out 5%. So the portfolio – the 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 – advisor said, hey, this portfolio's had an average rate of return of 6% historically, and you're only going to take out 5%, you'll never outlive your money. Wait, you did. You run out of money in 21 years. I'm telling you guys. So basically, basically, yes. just as a, the, the, on average, someone could say, someone could say on average, that person's portfolio averaged 6%. Yep. They took out 5% annually. Yep, to live on. To live on. Yep. And after 21 years, they had no money left. Zero. And all that all that happened was the first year and the second year. First year went down 18, 18 which and, is no, – and the second one, 6. 6. By the way, 18% is nothing. We've seen days where the market's been down 10, 12%. Right. That's amazing. I mean, that's startling. It's startling. So, so guys, everyone listening, performance isn't what's going to drive – I'm sorry – returns the market returns isn't your performance in your investments isn't what's going to drive your overall success in retirement it's not it's not the investments you're choosing it's the withdrawals you're taking from which investments is going to determine whether you outlive your money i know it's hard without the visual aids to see this paul but in our class one other example we use is people retiring 2 years apart these are actual market events we had one person retiring in one year and someone retiring the following year. Both retiring with $750,000, both taking out the same amount every year to live on, 5%. The one that retired one year earlier ran out of money at 84 years old. The other one had $1.2 million left still at 95 years old when they died. So basically, there was a one-year difference one when year. they retired. Yep. They had the exact same amount of money. Same investment. And they t- same investment and took the exact same out. Yep. Just one retired one year earlier. You got it. And the person who retired one year earlier ran out of money. Ran out of money. And the person who retired one year, year later had a lot of money. 1.2 when they were 96 years old when they one died. One-year difference. Right. Amazing. So I hope you guys are hearing us. This is probably the most important segment right here of the entire show because this is the risk you guys have with the market all-time highs. A lot of people suggesting there's bubbles. 
there's going to be bubbles. There's going to, there's always bubbles, but there's real significant segments of our, of the market that there is significant. Bubble. When you have influencers that aren't even 19 years old giving investment advice and, and telling people what to invest in. When my mother at 83 years old calls me and says, should I buy GameStop or cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin? I, that's the same thing we saw in late 90s. AOL, it was just AOL message boards, same, same behaviors. We saw the same behaviors in 2007, same exact. So it's not if it's going to happen, it's when. I, I, right, I, but I, which, uh, the, th- the thing is, what's, what's incredible about the example is the, the decline wasn't significant. I mean, Mm-mm. we're not talking about a 30 or 40 or we're not talking a 2008 here. No, Paul. We're talking about a, a, a moderate downturn. That's it. And that's that's a portfolio that's not even – that's like a 50-50 portfolio, a, not right. even a 60-40 that's portfolio. The, that's what's incredible. All right, that's incredible. So the whole allocation mix isn't the solution. It, right. Your 60-40 isn't the solution. It's where you're taking your money from. It's the income plan. And it's why these classes are critical. We get – we have CFOs from Fortune 500 companies, executives, a lot of faculty at the universities, very highly educated people attending these courses. They're seven-hour courses. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can attend, and we're streaming live during COVID so you can even stay in your own home. You have no excuse. You need to do this before you enter into retirement so you know what's going on. Go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com. Even if you're retired, you can attend because there's still really important lessons to learn. Call 800-240-8981. And we will be back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Glad to be here with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you'd like to get registered for one of their upcoming courses, you're welcome to do that. We have two easy ways for you to register, either online at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call the phone number 800-240-8981. These are two-day courses, or you can choose a one-day, seven- to eight-hour course. They're taught at local universities here in our community, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. So register today. Kirk and Paul, as we've been talking about sequence of returns risk, which you say is really the number one risk facing retirees um, in our current climate. Let's talk about how the financial services industry in general helps people or tells people how they can try to combat this risk. So here's conventional wisdom. And there's a number of different things that different advisors will use to try to manage the sequence of return risk. Historically, you would have heard when we have market volatility, spend less. That is very, very common. Um, or a- another way they would say it is they would condition you. You have all been conditioned. I, I promise you if I-, if I was able to reach out and ask all of you to be polled that are listening to us today, if you want to protect your principal in retirement, m- most of you would raise your hand. And then I would convince you why you really don't want to protect your principal. You've just been trained, conditioned to believe that's what you're supposed to do. Many of you would say a controlled spend down of my principal is fine. Just don't let me outlive my money. Some of you might want to leave as much wealth to your children as you have today. Legacy might be important to you. But if it's not, if you don't want to leave the $2 million you've saved right now to your kids, then you really don't want to protect your principal. Again, that's you've been trained, conditioned. So one of the ways our industry has conditioned you and trained you is to say, protect your principal so that you will, the whole purpose is so that the advisor doesn't have to do their job. You will self-regulate. When the market is volatile, you'll spend less. That's the translation. And that so, stinks, so I, Paul. Right, right, so that but, really stinks. Right. So there's, two, there's really, there's two offshoots of that. Some people just say throughout retirement, spend less. And there are other people say your spending should be flexible based on the market. Right? I've heard people say, well, when the market goes down, spend less. When the market goes up, you can spend more. That's horrific. It's, it's, I mean, it, it, but that's, it's not uncommon. No, right. it's the it, most mean, common. I hear this all the time from people. This that is, is my the, advice. That's right. Paul, that is so disappointing. People are going to way underspend what they otherwise could be spending in retirement, particularly those. See, these rules aren't designed with people that have saved 
and have resources for retirement. These general rules that they're using for all of you is really designed for people. The average baby boomer retiring is going to retire with $200,000 saved or less for retirement. So these general rules are important. Protect your principal. But you've got two, three million dollars. No, 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 no. You are going to way underspend and have a lesser quality retirement than you otherwise could. Here's another one. Hold on. Here's the other issue with that. Your spending patterns, everything you do, vacations, whether and when you retire, whether you do home improvements, will be dictated by market events. You will live and die by market events. You're saying if you follow that strategy. If you follow this rule, short-term market events are going to dictate what you do. And I'm here to tell you after losing, I don't know how many clients this year who have died in their 60s in our private practice. You don't know how long you're going to live. Don't assume you're going to live. So don't, your retirement plan, you can't let short-term market events or who's being elected or if we're in a recession, that should not dictate when you're taking your income and how much you should have a plan that maps it out so that we know every four to seven years, there's going to be a major market event. So if we know that, we can plan in advance so that you can pivot. If you educate yourself, you'll understand how to pivot, where to go to, when we have volatility and what accounts you can take money from. So another another thing I hear is yep just just have enough money in cash oh, that, right so I mean the, the point five of, to seven right, years they right, tell the you the point is is if we don't want to take money out of accounts that are volatile right either spend less right spend have your have your spending be based on the market or just have five to seven years of cash and draw your income from cash you know how insane that is Paul. You, I hear it Talk all. Talk about. I hear it all the time. This is this. They've con, they've conditioned. They've trained people. It. Our industry has trained them to do this. Right. Which is again. Do you know what a drag that is on your retirement? Having five to seven years of cash. Do you know how how less desirable your retirement will be? How much you're going to underlive what you otherwise could be living on and spending if you had five to seven years in cash? It's such a drag. I, I got a better one. That's, but it's just lazy. No one wants to build a customized individual what plan about, for you. What about laddering bonds? You can't. You're going <laughs> to ladder bonds. Right now, a muni bond, you're lucky to get to, to yield 1%. You're losing money if you're buying muni bonds right now. But these are strategies that everyone Real return about. with inflation. It, you can't. Right. You want to ladder bonds in the lowest interest rate environment that makes nothing. And then as interest rates rise, it goes down in value. You're going to ladder bonds right now. Now, I'm not saying always. I, I, I'm not saying. Wait, wait, let me be time. clear. I didn't say I'm laddering bonds. Right. No, I, well, I used to ladder bonds. I know. I'm just saying. There was a time I would ladder bonds well, when interest rates were much higher than they are. Right, right. That can help offset some of those issues. Right, right. I mean, right? And that's great. But now? Right. So these are the one size fit all solutions that, because yeah, how technical and how advanced are these people in this business? Really? Honestly? They're just trained salespeople. And so that's why if you have an advisor looking for an advisor, getting ready to retire or in retirement, do yourself a favor. Just spend seven hours in a classroom so you understand what they are doing for you and how it's doing a disservice for you because and what you need to do to give you the outcomes, to give you the best retirement possible. Because in our class, we have the time to really get into what are better ways to address this, right? We can't do this here. Yeah, we break down all the traps, the risks, the conventional wisdoms that are wrong. That's right. Then we give all the solutions and That's show right. examples of what a plan should look like. That's the breakdown. And to buy anything, invest anything, to buy an annuity, to buy an investment without building a plan, it's like buying furniture for a home you haven't built yet. You all have furniture for a home you haven't even built yet. You have all these investments and pensions and lump sums and Social Security you don't even know what you're – they're just selling you stuff and hope a general sticks at the wall, right? Come on. You guys, you got to build your home first. You got to have a plan before you figure out what investments, when to take your Social Security, how to take pension or lump sum. That's what the seven-hour course does for you. Seven hours taught at all the major universities. We're streaming it live. We are also now doing some small groups, Paul, in our learning center in Livonia where we're bringing in small groups of people in and while we're streaming, if you want to stay home, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to attend one of these courses, you can register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. 
Glad to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. You can find them on Facebook for much more information, especially about their courses that they teach here in our community. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation and start following them. You can also register for those courses by calling 800 800- 240-8981 or go to the website retirementplanningedu.org. Getting out in front of the biggest risk to your retirement. Sounds like a pretty good idea, right? Well, Kirk and Paul have explained that sequence of return risk, that is really our greatest risk. And you need a plan to combat it, don't you? You do. And uh, it's really at the core, Paul, what our class is about right? And it's the core why we have these radio shows. I hope those people who have been regular listeners of our radio show recognize that this is a purely educational show, just like the class. This isn't about selling a service, selling a, a product. There's This is about educating people about retirement, where the traps are, all the myths and misconceptions around conventional wisdom that unfortunately is still being promoted every single day by the financial service industry. And then how do you construct a plan, a real comprehensive individualized plan for you, specifically for your situation. And then if you are unable, if you can't build it yourself, which this is, and people are blown away when they come to the class. There's so much complexity to this that they're unaware of. That's why the industry just refuses to do it for you. Some of you are going to struggle to do this yourself. And if you end up struggling to do this yourself, we're going to give you examples to see. So you, you're you better prepared to try to find that right person to help you. And at least you're not being sold something that isn't going to work for you. And you're not going to learn that it's not working for you for five to 10 years from now. You'll understand how and what a plan looks like. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we do use this word plan very generically. And I think people who are listening may think that, well, they have a plan. So no, you don't. I think it's important to differentiate what is and what isn't a plan. So Paul, it's funny you say that, and I'd be happy for you to explain some of the things in a plan, but I do want to talk to some of our listeners because I promise you the engineers, right? I mean, this, the, the people who are t- attracted to the classes that are attending our class are those engineers, the executives, right? The CFOs, the CPAs, the, a lot of faculty and professors. These are really highly educated people who have created spreadsheets and they think they have a plan. And there is so little they really understand about retirement planning. It's not that you're not bright. It's There's no real good resources for you to find this information because honestly, the industry isn't, it, there's no incentive for them to explain this to people, right? So Paul, Explain what is part of a plan. What is in a plan? The important piece. So, so can I can I at least start with what isn't a plan? Is that fair? Yeah. Yep. For so, sure. Because I think most people assume everybody out there thinks they have a plan. <laughs> Very few people think they don't, right? No. And the reason why is because their advisor says they have a plan, and and so let's. What isn't a plan? A plan is not a brokerage statement. Just because you have investments. I mean, today, if this show is not telling you that, come on. At the end of the day, having a bunch of investments is not a plan, right? Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo and Monte Carlo simulation and back test performance is not a plan, right? So you're telling me the dial that they give them that says they have an 88% chance of success with a spreadsheet taking out 4% a year, that's not that's a plan? That's not a plan. Even though, even though the front cover of that says- Plan. Plan, right? Of course, right. But that's not a plan. And, and, and part of the problem is all of you are unique. When you retire, how much money you need, what age difference. the age differences between his legacy, your health issues, what tax bracket you're in, how charitable you are. Every, Pre-tax, post-tax money. That's right. Do you have retirement? Do you have non-retirement? Do you have a lot of houses? Are you getting rental income? Do you own a business? Pension lump sum. All of these variables make you unique. And each one of you, we got to take all those variables and we got to put it together to figure out over the next 30 years. What accounts are you going to take it so that we can minimize or eliminate sequence of return risk, right? Yep. At the same time, we obviously want money in the stock market, getting a lot of growth. Yep. But here's the crazy thing. If you're disciplined and you're not taking monies out of accounts that are highly volatile, you're less likely to panic. You're going to be more relaxed, more disciplined. 
And you're not going to make dumb decisions because you're anxious and sell at the wrong time. And at the end of the day, those monies that you do have in the stock market are actually going to perform better. Much better. Much better. People don't recognize until they are in retirement how the relationship with money changes. It's an emotional relationship. It hasn't been your whole life. I know you, you didn't panic in 2008. Baby boomers wear it like a badge of honor. I didn't panic. Yet you weren't retired and someone else was paying you. And you had time. So come on. There's a difference. Your anxiety isn't rational and your behavior is going to change when you retire. Thus, a plan that you are confident that you understand that maps out every single year for 30 years where you're taking income from and when we have market events where you're going to pivot to. How do you minimize taxes? People discount. Our industry won't talk to you about taxes. Their tax efficiency is tax loss harvesting and investing tax efficiently. No, tax planning is income planning efficiently, reducing taxes. And if you do it right, that's what we teach in the class. We're not talking tens of thousands. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of thousands, three, five, seven hundred thousand dollars of tax savings by just knowing when and how to take income from the right accounts at the right age. You want to eliminate sequence of return rates, create some tax efficiency. You want to drive performance, create some tax efficiency. Less I have to take out, the longer my money lasts, the less tra- less exposed to sequence of return risk I have. So if I pay less in taxes, I don't have to take as out much out every year to live on. And just understanding how to manage tax brackets, when to Roth convert, when to take Social Security, because Social Security is taxable. Everyone does the calculation wrong. They just want to know which one breaks even. You no, know, it's a tax problem. It's not a gross math problem. It's a tax problem. Again, ignored. These are things that are included in a plan. Mapping out your taxes for 30 years, I know they're forecasts and projections, but it gives you the most efficient path to follow. So everyone, make a $29 donation to charity, attend one of our seven-hour courses. They're at all the major universities. You can stream it live during COVID if you want to stay home, or if you want to go to a small group, you can come to the Livonia Learning Center. We're doing small groups there, and I think Michigan State Troy, we're doing small groups there now. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable. But accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.